Hello everyone, it's Maud here again, and welcome to your yin yoga practice. In this yin yoga practice, we are going to pretty much pay attention to a lot of parts in the body from the top to the bottom, the neck, we'll, give, we'll get some love, the shoulders, the chest, we're gonna do some twists here in our trunk, um, some hip stuff, pelvic stuff, legs, toes, ankles, so pretty much everything. And just like any yin class, I have here my bolster, my blanket, my two blocks, and my straps. So if you want to have a minute and grab those for you, of course, these props um, have substitutes, which could be house items. So your straps could be belt, um, your blocks could be anything in the kitchen or thick books that you can put your hands on. The blanket could be any blanket in your living room at your disposal, and the bolster can be a thick pillow. So let's get started. So actually just have a nice seat right here. You can sit in Sukhasana or easy pose with your shins crossed. You can also prop yourself on a block and clip this block with your ankles and maybe sit hips and heels. So just, just sit whichever way is comfortable for you. And the most important thing right here is that we pay attention. We start to pay attention. So if everybody, you can just close your eyes or even just keep your gaze soft a few feet in front of you. Just keeping a softness in the back of the neck. Just noticing the body and noticing which parts maybe feel tight or compressed or stagnant or maybe overused, overactivated. If you have an active lifestyle like I do, that's pretty easy to tell which muscles tend to overactivate themselves or we over recruit you know, with our lifestyles. And which muscles also feel lazy, you know, ignored, unattended to. And just kind of do that scan in your body without any judgment. Just kind of noticing which parts of the body will need some attention in this practice. And so you know that you can breathe through these parts of the body. So keeping your eyes closed or keeping a soft gaze. Let's just keep that conversation within our minds, so a mind-body conversation. Not even changing the breath just yet. You know, noticing the body physically makes you also physically land in your practice. So you have a good start. And it's a place of awareness. And once you feel settled in your practice and your sit bones feel settled and grounded on your prop, I want everybody to take a deep inhale through the nose. Open the mouth, softly sigh it out. <sighs> Inhale through the nose. Open the mouth, softly sigh it out. <sighs> Take your time. One more breath, just like that. Inhale in through the nose. Open the mouth, slowly sigh it out. Maybe you want your lips together, parting your teeth behind it, letting your tongue rest. Placing your left hand on your heart, your right hand on your belly. And the left hand on your heart space, your chest space, kind of letting your heartbeat resonate. And just noticing uh, how the heart is beating today. Maybe there's some emotional conversation going on in your head that might restrict you from truly having a releasing practice here. And maybe sort of when you have your hand on your chest, you're sort of telling yourself something like, we'll be okay, this is okay, we'll be fine. And the right hand on top of the belly button is a place of abundance. Just feel how much fire you have, any tension in the gut, anything uncomfortable. And even these hands in front of our bodies is just sort of a, a way to converse with ourselves, knowing anytime soon we're going to get moving. Just a couple of breaths right here, inhaling in and out through the nose if that's comfortable to you. Otherwise, just softly sigh out through the mouth. Shoulders relax. Facial muscles relax. Uh, 
after your next exhale, slowly release the arms. Blink your eyes open if they were closed. I want us to do some really conscious and slow shoulder rolls and shoulder circles right here. And in a yin yoga practice, we typically hold poses for a couple of minutes. And that might not suit everybody. Not everybody likes doing that, especially for those of you who may have certain conditions in your body where holding a joint, holding a pose in a shape for that long may not be good. Feel free to pull out of it anytime and just come back to it. Or feel free to pull out of a pose and do something else. So let's do opposite direction with the shoulders, just mobilizing the shoulder joint here before we get into these nice yin poses, these juicy yin poses. Two more circles this direction. And once you're done with that, slowly drop your right ear towards your right shoulder. And drop your left ear towards your left shoulder. And just doing that a couple more times. Try not to overstretch the neck. Just bending it deep enough to feel a sensation, but not overachieving anything. The neck is one part of the body we definitely do not want to yank or shock or surprise. We start to drop our chin towards our chest, keeping our spine long, inhaling as we start to look up, exhaling as we look down, and then go the other direction, clockwise or counterclockwise, exhaling as we come down, one more circle this way. And then exhale out. Just one more pose here as we're seated. Inhale the arms up. And as you exhale, the left hand locates your right elbow, finding this nice tricep stretch, letting the uh, top of the head rest towards your forearms. If this is not easy for you, just grab hand to hand or wrist to wrist and just lift your arms up, just kind of interlocking them. Otherwise, feel a nice tricep stretch trying your best not to splay the uh, belly out to sort of spray all that energy out. Bring that energy back in, the ribs back in, so that you use that energy, use that fire to lengthen the body up. So kind of owning that space instead of wasting it out. Last breath right here, inhale. And as you exhale, slowly release the arms, shake the arms if they feel a little bit tired. And then lift your arms up once again. This time the right, uh, the right hand locates your left elbow. Feel that stretch one more time and you notice the tendency to really open that belly. Bring it back up. Bring your ribs back and maybe this left hand can just rest behind the neck. Just let it hang. Facial muscles are still soft. And definitely no judgment here. There's no overachieving or there's nothing to really strive for except peace, except a feeling of just a gentleness and softness and self-care. Slowly release the arms. And I'm going to remove my bums away from my prop, away from my block. The only prop we'll need at this point is a bolster or it could be your pillow. So set everything aside and just let your bolster stay maybe like a foot or so ahead of you. And let's get into all fours. Really placing the hands underneath the shoulders and the uh, uh, hands underneath the shoulders and the knees underneath the hips. And finding that time to really spreading the to really spread the fingers, a little bit of lift in the belly away from the mat so that you're not dropping into your joints. And before we go anywhere, we just want to do these little movements in the hips left and right, sort of opening the lower back. And as you keep your fingers spread, try to find a nice foundation with your hands so that these poses become sustainable. So always start from the ground up. And then start to make these C-shaped curves so that your left hip point wants to be close to your shoulders and then your right hip point wants to be close to your right shoulder. And just try and do these sassy movements, as I call them. And notice, you know, how that feels on the side body. Notice how that feels on your obliques. And just do maybe one more on each side without any hurry, without too much anticipation. And 
on keeping your hands where they are. Let's do some cat cows. As you inhale, drop the belly, lift your tailbone. Really open up the chest and then lift your gaze. And then as you exhale, draw the belly in, curl it in, tuck your tailbone, concave the chest and drop your head. Walk your hands towards your knees. You can be under your fingertips or make teepees with your fingers. Pull the belly back in and really puff up the mid-back. Drop your head. And as your mid-back is puffed, slowly send your hips to the left. And then send your hips to the right. One more time, left and right. Feels good on the lower back. Really rounding that spine. Coming back into your quadruped or hands and knees. Maybe just two rounds of cat cow. Really feels good on the spine. This is something that all of us should do every day. And then slowly come back to center. We are going to get into this ca pose called puppy pose. And like I said, um, some of these poses, the length of these yin poses may not be suitable to everybody. So if you feel like this is too much, you're starting to jump in your armpits, just pull away from the pose, have a few breaths, and then come back to it. Otherwise, we're going to start our puppy pose with one arm at a time. So I want you to bend your left arm. This is my left arm. Cross it over towards your right side. Let your right hand reach towards the edge of your bolster. And then just plant your forehead down on your left forearm. And start to drop your heart down. And what this pose does to me is it makes me prevent dumping into my armpits, but at the same time getting that nice chest melting experience that heart opening experience. So the right arm is reaching forward. The forehead is resting on my left forearm. Hips are lifted and every exhale you take, just start to melt your heart down towards the mat without overthinking. It is when we move slow it is when we are told to be still, not static, but just to be still. That thoughts come into our mind, things come up. And just notice which thoughts tend to dominate, you know, your mind in these poses that we typically do, you know, for a few minutes, for, for 12 breaths at least. They're just things to notice. Take your last breath right here, full inhale through the nose. Open the mouth, slowly sigh it out. Beautiful, slide your right hand underneath your right shoulder and gently push yourselves up. Come back into quadruped, sway the hips left and right. This time cross the right arm over towards the left side with your forearm. Left hand reaches out towards the edge of that bolster. Plant your forehead down on your right hand. Take your deep breaths right here, starting inhale. And then exhale it out. Feeling the sense of surrender towards gravity, towards the ground. And sometimes that sense of surrender is asking for a lot because <laughs> we really do want to be in control of everything. But there's just things that we can only surrender to and melt to and sort of just trust the process. And in a yin yoga class, we definitely don't want to be forceful about anything. We don't want to force the body to get to a place 
that it's not really ready for, it's not prepared for. And that's why we don't just dump our bodies and drop our bodies and drop our joints into these poses. We try to warm it up first, loosen up the joints, and then we get there. So right here, just arrive. Just let the chest, the heart space, get there, get to the bottom. Please take your last breath right here. Inhale. Sigh it out. Exhale. Slowly slide the left hand underneath your left shoulder. Use it to push yourselves up. Come back into your quadruped. Finding your cat cows, maybe doing two or three of these or doing two or, th two or three of movements that feel good to you. Slowly in this cat cow, noticing if you want to just move in a hurry. Mm, beautiful. Send your right hip down, or whichever hip you have that makes you, it's easy for you to look at me. I want you to grab your bolster, even your thick blanket if you want. We're going to drape our rib cage, our the side of the ribs, onto the bolster for a nice side body lengthening experience. So really set, take the time to set that hip down. And then as you glaze the body over the bolster, I want you to really face the front um, of your room or whichever space you're at. So I don't want you guys to collapse your chest down. I want you to face sideways. And just drop your head towards your bicep. And you can be a good judge with your knees. You can stagger the knees. You can stack them up. But just let the head rest on top of your, your bicep. And this upper arm can even reach all the way towards the other hand to really sort of encourage that lengthening of the side. But it can also just be in front of you. For me, I typically like to reach out towards my other hand and I just want to make sure that the chest feels open. There's no restriction in the neck. And as you're breathing here, I want you to really imagine the lungs inside the body or visualize the lungs inside the body rather. And as you inhale in, you really want to take advantage, you want to exploit the lungs' ability to expand all the way through, top to bottom, left and right. It is dying for us to let it do so. So allow it. So as you inhale in, all the way in, imagine your entire rib cage expanding, which means there's a little bit of push towards that bolster or that furniture. And as you exhale, Run on an empty gas tank, really let go of every ounce of breath that you have. It's a beautiful experience when you can sort of appreciate the body as you visualize whatever's happening inside of it without really looking at it. It's like an internal dialogue that's happening. Like right now, I'm telling my lungs, thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. Thank you for letting me breathe this way. A few more breaths right here. Take a deep inhale, please. And then exhale. 
one more time, just like that in here. Let's pull it out, please. And then get this upper arm released. Slowly do these nice shoulder rolls with the upper arm, reaching back, keeping the head where it is. Try not to rotate the body, just let the shoulder joint feel mobile. And the circle's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and all five fingers of that hand really try to engage and reach out. One more circle this way, exaggerating the movement. And then slowly planting this upper hand in front of your face, using it to drag yourself up. This time we're going to get into a deer pose. I'm trying to mirror you. This is your left leg and this is your right leg. So keep your left shin sort of in front of the body like so. And it's horizontally kind of oriented relative to the body. And send your right foot to the back. Bend it deep a little bit closer to your right glute. Your bolster, you can situate it vertically away from you. And so I want us to put our right hand on top of our right hip here. And instead of just doing this deep twist towards the bolster, I want us to do these motions, these mobility drills, as I call it, to kind of prepare the body for where it's going. So plant your left hand down towards the bolster and then your right hand on your hip. And then drop your right booty down and then slowly send it forward, finding that nice twist. Inhale to drop the booty down. Exhale to twist. Some people like to reverse that breath, so maybe they like it when you exhale down and then inhale here. So find that for you. Just see what works for you. Maybe two more times. Notice what's happening with the body when we really prepare it for where it's going. Last time through. And I want us to plant our hands on either side of the bolster. If you already know this is too far for you, Grab one of your props, could be the blanket, it could be your blocks, but place something on top of it. And I don't want us to dump into that furniture. I want us to like crawl our way there and make your decision. You can plant your forehead down, you can plant the right side of your face. So try not to twist the body out too much if it's not prepared. So for now, even with my microphone right here, I'm just going to start to plant the right side of my face down. The point of yin yoga is not really to sleep in these poses. There's still some engagement happening here and you're in front of your right hip. There's a bit of sensation happening right here, kind of between the right waist and your hip point. I want you guys to relax your fingers. If your palms are down, maybe you can flip them up just to discourage your fingers from holding on to something. Since the whole day with our cell phones, with our keyboards, we're always holding on to something. So just let the fingers go. Eyes closed or soft gaze. Like I had mentioned, it's easy to have some swirling thoughts in these poses that are considered static for a lot of people. And I really disagree. There's nothing static about this. I just look like I'm still, but I'm definitely not frozen. So take your attention back to the breath. And even right here in your last two breaths in this pose, maybe you can truly make your exhales longer than your inhales. Inhale all the way in. Exhale it all the way out. Beautiful. Slide your hands on either side of the bolster. Gently push yourself up. Place both feet in front of you, please, and hands behind you. Take this opportunity to open the chest and find some nice windshield wipers left and right. 
when we do these windshield wipers, they're not necessarily intermissions of the practice. They really are a part of the practice. So find the time to really drop your knees down, even getting that inner knee onto the mat. Beautiful, last time. And then slowly you can shift or pivot whichever way you want, but I'm gonna send my bolster over here on my other side. So this could be your left hip or your right hip, whichever hip you didn't do. In my case, I'm trying to mirror you, so this would be your right hip. Trying to get this right leg kind of across the body like so horizontally and then your left foot close to your left booty and then we want to plant our hands right here outside that bolster knowing that we're going to glaze our rib cage the sides of the rib on top of it so find a nice place for it and I have a short torso and it's sometimes tricky for me to look for a nice spot where I can truly truly just trust the bolster to do its job but for now, I'm just going to stay right here as long as I can rest, you know, my left temple or my right temple towards my right arm. I can just rest my head. Again, making sure that the heart stays open. Staggering the knees or stacking the knees. That is the yogi's choice. Inhale your left arm up. Then you can exhale. You can don't have to grab the other hand. You can just go place it on top of it. Or you can even just place your arm here or on your hip, whichever feels good. Notice if the breath feels choppy. Notice if the breath feels interrupted. And it's usually a thought. It's usually something that feels compressed inside. And if you have this just heavy thought that you can't get rid of, imagine those thoughts as clouds and just let them pass. These clouds are in front of you. They're within your line of sight. But before you know it, they disperse. They they vaporize and then they're gone. And sometimes it's best to do that with thoughts so that you don't get attached too much to them, especially when you're in the self-care practice right now and it just disrupts your, your practice. So if there's anything that's really bothering you right now, just tell yourselves, it's still going to be there after this class. So for now, just honor your time and presence. Can you take two more breaths here? Yes, you can. And then slowly release the right arm or the left arm, whichever it is. And then do those shoulder rolls that we did on the other side and really making it big. How are those fingers, guys? Don't let them feel lazy. Reach forward, up and back. Really opening these muscles in front of the chest. Beautiful. One more circle that way. And then plant it in front of your face. Slowly push yourselves up. changing the orientation here with the bolster. And I want you guys to resituate your legs wherever they were. And once again, we don't want to just get the body there in these deep poses. So I want you to place your left hand on top of your left hip. This is your left booty. Place your right hand on top of the bolster and then start to drop your left booty down and then slowly twist towards the bolster because that's where we are going and we want to prepare our bodies to get there. So that's the destination and this is part of the journey. Just a little bit of mobilizing and telling ourselves, okay, muscles not quite prepared, the tissues are not quite prepared, so let's move it. Let's let it unravel a little bit. One more time, just like that. 
and slowly grab your block or your blanket, whichever prop that you have, so that this furniture right here becomes a little bit higher and thicker. You find a nice place right here. You can certainly um, drop down to your foreheads or the left side of your face, the right side of your face. Again, letting the fingers go, keeping your palms up so it's not tempted to hold on to something. The breath is deep, but it is soft. Breathe into that space in front of that left hip. Soften the facial muscles, keeping your jaw relaxed. Beautiful job. Last breath here. And then slowly slide your hands on either side of the bolster. Gently push yourselves up. Once again, have a seat and have your feet in front of you. And then revisit those windshield wipers, really dropping the knees left and right, taking the time to really let the knees touch the ground. This is not an inner mission, right? This is part of the program. And maybe do just one more on each side for good measure. Slowly come back to center. We're going to get to a pose called Cat Pulling Its Tail. And I just love that the name of that pose. I'm going to set my props aside. So I'm just trying to mirror you. Um, this should be your right hip. And this should be your left leg. So try to get your left leg lengthened in front of you and your right hip down. And so this bottom leg is your right leg. I want you to start with your elbow, your right elbow down towards the ground. And if you need more space, you definitely can. Otherwise, you don't have to lock this front leg. You can just keep it uh, kind of baby bent. I want you to reach uh, your left hand out and grab your right foot. And as you grab your right foot, you're not just grabbing it, you're actually sort of lengthening that right hip by putting that left foot or that right foot a little bit closer to your glute. What that means is this left shoulder is going to feel a little bit more open. What that means is that this left hand is going to want to grab the ankle or the foot, whichever part of your leg. And you really want to engage that glute, that right glute, that helps to get that right hip to open. So much stuff happening, right? But if all that is just French to you and you're like, I don't know what's going on, I just know the shape, then that's fine. Enjoy your practice. You can sort of just melt you know, the right side of your face down towards the mat, towards your arms. This left arm is active, and it's kind of pulling your foot a little closer to your glutes. And just let this left leg lengthen out to the front. Taking some deep inhales and exhales here. There's a lot happening in this pose. There's definitely a back of the leg opening on this left leg. There's a front hip opening happening on the right side. And then there's a shoulder opening here on your left side as you try to grab your right foot. Mm. 
And there's also some breathing. Never forget the breathing. Inhale. And exhale. One more breath right here. Exhale, please. And we're sort of weaving these poses together. So slowly let go of that right foot. And I want you guys to just melt your back, your shoulder blades onto the mat, keeping your left leg on top. Find a nice supine twist so that you're just literally settling your back down toward your mat. And then your left leg is crossing over the right. You can open the arms to the side. Find a nice supine twist. Or the right hand can be in front of that, on top of that left leg. So it's a nice sort of progression from one pose to the other. Noticing the lower back here, especially on that left side, and not forcing this knee down. I have a very tight back, especially since oh I just worked out as well. And so my knee's not quite ready to melt down towards the mat. It takes some time for me to really unravel my tissues and really open and release them to make that happen. Beam your chest towards the sky. Beautiful. Last breath. And then slowly release. Release this left leg. Find a nice good morning stretch in the middle of your mat. So point your toes in front of you and have your arms go overhead, maybe steeple grip. Inhale long and strong. Nice neutralizing pose. Exhale, slowly release. Roll onto the side and then gently push yourselves up. I'm going to go and pivot to the other side so I can show cat pulling its tail on this other side. This time the upper leg is your right leg. This bottom leg is your left leg. And so I'm going to plant my left arm down, plant the left side of my face, or I can start with my elbow. My right hand is going to reach towards my left foot or left ankle. Again, a little bit of engagement on that um, left glute to help protect, to help open up the left hip, rather. This right shoulder wants to open up. It should. That's the only way to grab. And by the way, you can use your straps if this foot is too far. And then I'm going to just plant my temple or the, the entire left side of my face down towards my arm. Try not to over-engage this front leg. That's not really the whole point. You don't have to reach out for it or do anything fancy. Just lengthen it to the front. Again, just notice the kind of thoughts that are swirling in your head as you're here. And it looks like we're just kind of hanging out, but we know there's muscles that are being engaged. We're trying to find um, this nice place where we feel soft and gentle, but at the same time, there's definitely activity in parts of the body. And that's what makes a yin practice different from a restorative practice. In yin, there is still some stuff happening. We're not just hanging out. There's definitely a feeling of surrender that is almost required for these poses because these are not typically easy poses to execute, um, you know, for longer than you're used to. Two more breaths here, please. Take your time to do a deep inhale. And a deep exhale. Slowly release the foot. And once again, you're just going to really get your shoulder blades down towards the mat. 
ch beam your chest towards the ceiling so that your right leg is now still on top, finding a nice supine twist. Left hand could be on top of the right thigh and your right arm could just open out to the side. Parts of the body that we'll be talking to will be the lower back for sure, possibly the glutes. And again, you don't have to yank this knee down if the body's not ready. So we'll just rest the hand out there. Kind of encourages that sensation without being forceful. As much as I like movement and I like moving around a lot and mobilizing the body, there's just times where you really just want to be in this place of very minimal movement. And it's sort of a, a litmus, a test also for the non-physical yoga, right? The yoga that happens in the heart and the mind and this sort of how can you cultivate a sense of awareness, a sense of kindness in your body without judging it, and without necessarily feeling competitive um, and striving for something, just letting things be. And that's the feeling of surrender that I really love in these types of classes. And then slowly unravel from this twist. Finding a nice Morning stretch right here, toes point forward, lengthen the arms overhead. Big inhale, please. And as you exhale, release the arms, roll them to a side of your choice, and gently push yourselves up. Have a seat. Bring your right leg in and bring your left leg out. And you can definitely have a blanket underneath your bums if you want. Feel free to grab your strap. Getting through some leg stuff here. And wrap the strap around the ball mount of your left foot, your left leg, your left foot rather. And if this is the case and you have a strap or a belt, I want you to grab the strap with your left hand. And again, we're not just gonna get there. I am always a fan of like sliding the body towards that direction and then coming back up. Slide the back of the palm towards the left. And again, you can notice I'm already squaring my chest, already letting it face front as opposed to collapsing my shoulder down. So that's a different kind of pose. One more time, one more slide. And this time maybe just grabbing the strap with your right hand, if you wanna keep it secure. Otherwise, you can also just grab the strap with your, uh, sorry, with your opposite hand, which in this case would be your right hand. And you can always work towards lengthening your strap like I'm doing. And other people have, you know, done fancy things with this. They've hooked this up with their arm and all these different things that they're doing. It's really up to you. What we're just trying to do is just to find this nice engagement in the leg and at the same time also finding a nice shoulder opening with this opposite arm. So the length of my strap is already perfect for me. For you, you can kind of take the time to find that. But like engage the leg, open up the, the left leg right here. And then using the strap, I want you guys to pull it with your right hand and sort of find this nice twist towards the right. Inhale to release. And as you exhale, slowly find that nice twist. One more time here, inhale. Exhale, find that twist. Beautiful, slowly release. This time slide the palm towards that leg. You can always lift that right arm up if you want. You can reach out towards the strap, but basically using the strap to so as sort of leverage for you to be able to open up the chest 
find this nice lateral bend stretch over here on the right side. So I'm just going to be here. You, you guys could do whatever shape that you want or whatever variation that you want in this. But for me, this is already a plenty enough cracking open the right side of my waist, my right side body. So this is beautiful. I can even rest my head on top of the strap. And just find this nice deep stretch over on my right side. Beautiful. Can we stay here for two more breaths? Exhale it out. Last time through. And then slowly release, slide the hand back. Beautiful. This time, bend your left leg in. Send your right leg out. Wrap the strap around the ball mount of that foot. Again, you can do whatever variation of the strap, which whichever length that you want. <coughs> you kind of know where we're going. So I'm going to grab the strap with my left hand. Kind of mirror you. Engaging the right leg so that the back of the right leg really opens up. Sort of having this left elbow poke out. Now we're going to just slide the arm towards the foot. Preparing us for where we're going. Beautiful. Last time through. And do it one more time. But just plant that right hand down. Poke your left elbow out and sort of find that twist. Beautiful. Really squeezing that left shoulder blade towards the spine at the same time engaging this right leg. Slowly release. Let's just do two more. Inhale to open up. Exhale. Slowly come back to center. One more time. Inhale. And then exhale. This time slide the palm again towards the foot. Again, you can hold the strap in any way that feels comfortable to you. For me, this is comfortable. And I'm going to turn my body towards the front, a little bit upwards, and then find that nice lateral bend stretch on my left side, pinning my left hip down, and even resting my head on top of that strap. opening up the back of that right leg and being okay with just being still again we're not frozen we're not static it just looks like we are but there's plenty of stuff happening and it always starts and ends with the breath Deep breath. Last time through, inhale. And then slowly exhale to release. Nice job. Let's do those windshield wipers once again. Nice job, yogis. You did a really good job this time. If you wish to do so, please do your Shavasana. You can do a traditional Shavasana where you basically have your body um, on your back, down on the mat, with your feet as wide as the mat, and your hands on either side of the hips just opening up. Or you can also just stay right here and have a seat, have a couple of breaths, and end the class, end your session, end your practice any way that you want. And so for those of you who are not doing the traditional Shavasana, we can just have a seat here and take a couple of moments to breathe.
if you're in your Shavasana, please take as much time as you need. Take as long as you need. And we can just end this class whenever. But for those of us who are upright and seated, palms together, press, pray at the heart. Let's all take a deep inhale. And a deep exhale. Bow your head towards your hands. Have a hint of a smile. And you can blink your eyes open. Thank you so much for joining me in this yin yoga practice. I hope you enjoyed this practice. I hope you feel more open. Have a good rest of your day. Namaste from me to you.